Okay, well, Jesus has illustrated his point for the lads, and now he seems to turn to making the same point in a way designed to appeal to his lady followers. Now, that, that is going to get straight up pharisaical noses. Okay? They're not like that at all. The point here is that Jesus welcomed lady followers to the extent that he tells the story they're going to get. He's going to make the same point he made with the thing about the shepherds for the lads, and he's now going to turn to the ladies and he's going to say, Ladies, you're in the house. And round your neck, you're wearing. What came with you at your betrothal? You're wearing, in the manner of ancient Near Eastern women, you're wearing your bride price in a sort of a, not a necklace, but a sort of a thing that goes here, around your neck. And as you're in your house, you look there, and you see that one of those coins has been lost, and it's hit the floor somewhere, and that is somewhere in the house. Where's it gone? You've lost, as it were, your engagement ring. It's not just that this has value, this coin. It belongs to a piece which is of significance to you. The work's done by, by Bailey and people like that on, on ancient news and doctrinal content. And you can just, well, have you lost, have you lost your wedding ring? Have you lost your engagement ring? Woo! Not great, is it? This woman, it's, it's like, you know, it's got to us straight away. And this woman, Jesus is telling this parable about. There are women there who can identify with that straight away. What does she do? Like that shepherd, this woman drops everything, goes to some trouble, the expense of a light, and sweeps through the house, the hard work of it all, meticulously until she finds what she'd lost. And again, she finds it, and what does she do? She calls her friends and her neighbours together and requires of them merriment as she throws them all apart. Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me, verse 9. I have found my lost coin. And then, here comes the point. In the same way, says Jesus, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There's the lesson. The point Jesus wants to make to those arrogant people in verses 1 to 2 who think that they are a cut above and that lies at the, the root of their objection to Jesus' model. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner. These Pharisees, these teachers of the law, won't admit the truth about themselves long enough to reckon themselves sinners and repent. They'd rather cover up and evade the implication of their own guilt and sin by focusing on the unworthiness and the unacceptability of other people. And that is a common human trait. But there is rejoicing in heaven. God is pleased when one sinner repents. Jesus is not appeasing these objectors on this issue. He is simply calling on them to repent of it. If you're objecting for that reason, shame on your head. So Jesus has told two stories saying pretty much the same thing. One for the girls, one for the boys. And the Pharisees are sort of wriggling already. They don't like that at all. Women followers? What? Unacceptable. Jesus had women followers. This in itself then makes the point to the, to the Pharisees, to the teachers of the law, that God's choice of disciples, his followers of Jesus, would not be the same choice as theirs, because there's women in there for starters. And now Jesus puts the point on the issue for these people who are objecting that we want them to follow Jesus, they don't like the crowd he's got with them. Basically, Jesus says that taking that position has consequences. Consequences that are going to hurt you. And that's where we get to the parable of the lost sons. Wanted day and night. God wanted the dark and light. God wanted the earth and old.